Hopefully, they don't sue me. Alright, yo. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Friday Podcast. Movie review. What they do. So this week, still catching up on some movies um, that I've been meaning to review. I rewatched this one recently with my son, um, and I drank some cold water, and I forced myself to feel because it was kind of hurting. It's not good. So I do not like the dentist. But I don't brush and floss every morning and night. I need to start doing that. But that water is fucking freezing cold. And I was like, just feel it. And I was just like, Grr. and now it's like sore. Because I did that. Not fucking good, Chris. What am I thinking? I torture yourself. Why not just let the water go through? Ah, hopefully nothing. So God, please let me not have cavities. Fish your wounds, Jesus Christ. Um, cavity or cavity. Yeah. All right. So anyway, this movie, Blood and Blood Out, incredible movie. Um, three hours long. Watched it with my son. Watched it back in the day a few times. Watched it with my friends. Watched it solo. Classic movie, hood movie, classic Chicano movie, um, must watch if you're Hispanic, um, Mexican, American. It's a uh, it's a must see. Um, five stars, man. They actually filmed it. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over some facts, but it goes into family, brotherhood. Um, what happens when you don't have a, a father figure? Um, what a couple different choices can can lead up to? Uh, and and just it's it's really interesting because it, it, it's it's about three cousins. Two dudes are like step brothers, and then then they have a cousin. Um, Miko. And they all start off, you know, young, hyper, you know, one is a painter, the other is a, the other just got back from Las Vegas, he was living with his dad, but, you know, he, he, well, you know, I don't know if you know, but he was living with his dad, he got into it with him, and he left, so he wanted to go live with his mom in L.A. His dad was living in Vegas, so he's in, back in town. And then um, Benjamin Brad's character is, uh, he's like a bad, like a hood dude, right? He's in the hood and shit. So, um, they all start off, you know, happy and young, and then they get into some shit trying to prove themselves and then that shit leads to other shit that leads to some shit uh which leads to more shit and then and then on the other side it leads to even more so it's just it just keeps going and it just shows the reality of the hood it just shows another aspect because you know boys in the hood is incredible but this Blood and Blood Out movie shows um, the Hispanic side, the Mexican side of it. And it like takes place, the time period it takes place is pretty interesting. Um, and it's cool, it's fiction, you know? It's not like America Me, which is based on fact, but um, nonetheless, it still has an incredible impact. And it's, it's a great movie. All right. So it stars Jesse Borrego, Benjamin Pratt, Enrique Castillo, Damian Chapa, and Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, 
it was released February 5th, 93 limited. And then um, nationwide, April 30th, 93. So I didn't know this, but it was also known as Bound by Honor and Blood and Blood Out, Bound by Honor. I always knew it my entire life since I was born in 89. I don't know when I came across this movie or what year it was, probably early 2000s. But I always knew it as Blood and Blood Out. Um, it's an American epic drama, crime drama film directed by Taylor Hackford that's become a cult classic film among the Mexican-American community. It follows the intertwining lives of three Chicano relatives from 72 to 84. So 1972 to 1984. They start out as members of a street gang in East Los Angeles, and as dramatic incidents occur, their lives and friendships are forever changed. Blood and Blood Out was filmed in 1991 throughout the Spanish-speaking area, oh shit, uh, areas of Los Angeles and inside California's San Quentin State Prison. So they were actually in the prison recording, so that's pretty dope. And then... Um, they were in the streets, they were in the hood, they were in the houses and shit, it's pretty dope. The origin for Blood and Blood Out has had its genesis in the early 1980s when producer Jerry Gershwin hired novelist Ross Thomas to write the first script, which initially went into development at New Visions Pictures under director Harold Becker. Interesting, so it's got a novelist writing the script. Actor Edward James almost was offered the chance to both direct and star in the film, but due to creative differences, almost turned down the project. Other actors considered for roles in the film included Andy Garcia, Lou Diamond Phillips, and Sean Penn. Lou Diamond Phillips, he's the one that looks, um, I think he's the one that plays in Obama, but I might be wrong, I gotta look that up. After New Vision's pictures folded, producer Taylor Hackford would take over directing duties. Screenwriter Floyd Mutrux was brought on to do a script rewrite, as did screenwriter Jeremy Iacone and writer Jimmy Santiago Baca, who Hackford, whom Hackford credits with contributing most to the final story, which Baca had based on his life experience. Nice. Life experiences. The three prison gangs in the film are fictional creations of screenwriter Jimmy Santiago Baca and director Taylor Hackford. However, they were all loosely based on actual prison gangs, with the Aryan Vanguard, Black Guerrilla Army, and La Onda representing the Aryan Brotherhood, Black Guerrilla Family, and the Mexican Mafia, respectively. Actor Theodore Wilson died shortly after filming his scenes in the film. Artist Aiden uh, Hernandez was hired to create the paintings. Uh, the character of Cruz Candeleria was supposed to have painted. All the paintings that were used in the film were created by him. A rumor circulated over the mural in the reservoir seen in the film's climax. Some believe the mural has since been painted over. The truth, however, is the producers did not have permission to paint the mural on the reservoir wall. When the, what the producers did ask was a local artist to paint the mural on plywood, which they placed in front of the wall, giving the illusion that the mural was painted on the wall. Uh, the producers got the okay to leave the mural up for a few months after the movie's release. The artist who painted the mural was allowed to take the painting down. The painting was disassembled into four parts. Aiden Hernandez passed away May 17, 21. His family has the original painting. Hernandez made a cameo appearance in the film as the drug dealer Gilbert in the art gallery scene. Uh, he's like outside and shit. He's like, why'd you bring him? Uh, the film was shot in and around LA and East LA and inside the walls of San Quentin State Prison. The main character, Miklo, is sent to San Quentin, where much of the film's plot takes place. Several of the then inmates appear in the film as extras. Whoa. In addition, several of the prison staff members also appear as others, and some facilitate the production of the film by serving as technical advisors. Many members of the staff were given small lines in the film, 
with the warden giving an extended cameo in a part that is somewhat integral, inte integral, integral to the part. In addition, that actor Danny Trejo, who appears in the film as Geronimo, has served had served time as Sam Quentin before deciding to become an actor. Interesting. In addition to prison inmates and staff and writer and staff and artist Hernandez, screenwriter and barrio poet Jimmy Santiago Baca cameos as a prison inmate and member of the La Onda Council. The film was initially titled Blood and Blood Out, but was retitled Bound by Honor before the film's release. Blood and Blood Out refers to the initiation ritual of having to kill someone to enter a gang and on the reverse end, not being able to leave the gang unless killed. This is a common initiation in many gangs, including prison gangs, and it's also the motto of La Onda in the film. Hollywood Pictures insisted on the name change as the studio felt that the original title might incite violence in Los Angeles, in East Los Angeles. In addition, executives at Hollywood Pictures, a division of the Walt Disney Studios, were concerned about the potential effect the 1993 film could have on Los Angeles following the 1992 LA riots especially after the attribution that was given to Boys in the Hood, well, I didn't know this, as a partial cause of or inspiration for the civil unrest. Director Taylor Hackford has stated that he was very unhappy with this decision as the film's message was the exact opposite of the one that the studio feared would be transmitted. Interesting. I didn't read all that before. I, you know, it's new to me too. Love it, man. Five stars for show. Check it out if you haven't checked it out. I think everybody should check it out. It's like a piece of history. Be right back with Badass Woman of Herstory.